Hey guys, it's Logan, and I thought I'd hang out down here at the rock quarry today. However, whoo, it sounds more like a stockyard with all these cows bawling out there. I hope you can hear me over them. Now, what I've got for us today is this beautiful new Kenworth K100 and an all new tooling from DCP by First Gear. A 45 foot vintage livestock trailer and a special treat. I'm going to compare this trailer over to the Top Shelf Replica's 40-foot vintage Wilson livestock trailer that he made several years ago. By the way, item number on this one is 60-1814, and they call it brown. But to me, it looks a little more copper. And there it is, out of the package. It's a good-looking setup, right? Be classic on the highways back in the 70s and early 80s. But we'll have to get into this trailer and take a real good close look. But I want to start off with the cab because, well, I got to show you a little bit about the cab. Doesn't that look more copper than brown? I mean, they're calling it brown. I guess you could say it's brown, but it does look a little more coppery colored to me. Kind of different on this one. They put a white frame, white uh, fifth wheel there. It's got the white for the air intake pipes with chrome caps, chrome exhaust, uh, your typical chrome parts that are on all of them. It's got a really cool white stripe that goes around the cab, classic 70s. Kenworth grill, full interior, air horns, chrome visor, chrome tapered ends of bumper, positionable uh, front wheels and steering. It has the individual jewel style headlights, the marker lights which are painted in as individual parts added on. Up top, the roof lights are molded in and tampoed over so they look cool. Got air horns, chrome plated. Overall, they do a great job on these trucks. It's got a red transmission and a yellow engine, which means it's a cat engine. However, back in the day, owner operators were white, soft rubber tires, working suspension, and 10 hole chromes. Overall, a good looking cab, does tilt, clips back in place. It's a great, great piece to go with. Now let's look at the beautiful new trailer. It's a nice heavy trailer. It looks good. It has marker lights tampoed. It has a little warning by the landing gear. It has a little reflector there. And then the top up here, it's die cast. The base is die cast. You can see it has a spring suspension molded in. Does not work, which honestly, I like that better because uh, the trailer actually sits flat, whereas their other suspension with the springs, they kind of lean one way or the other. Sides are screwed on, which is similar to the construction of the 53 foot punch sides trailer. Has copyright 2023, first gear ink, Payasta, Iowa, USA, cast into the base. That's pretty nice. They cut the bars on the bottom for that. That's okay. That's not a big deal. Kingpin for their trucks. Another screw there which hold it together. It has soft rubber tires with sort of a vintage um, bias ply tread pattern on them. Kind of. <laughs> so it does look like a new tire which is more period correct than the tires they've been using. On the back, we have Wilson logo and Wilson trailers tampoed on the mud flaps. They are hard plastic, which that's normal. Has a step here. It is a center load, and it has Wilson logo there and there, plus it has a warning there. Brake lights are nice tampos, and the marker lights are all tampoed. Back door does go open, which is very much like all the other ones, and it is a plastic roll-up door. It will go all the way up, but I'm not going to force it. Inside, we have the gates. We have the floor molded in really nice, but there is no upper deck. It is a drop belly, so it should have another deck right here, but the deck is not actually in there. They did not put the deck like a DCP did, but they do have the first set of gates, and I don't see any other gates further up. But all the way up on the neck up here of the tongue, it does have the same molding, so I would assume it has the same floor molding in the base as well. Round on this side, 
same sides. It's really, really well defined, all the rivets and everything. Go on to the front, up here on the uh, porch light, up here we have Wilson Trailer Company and the Wilson logo. We have a spare tire and a rim hanging up there. And then it has this little string that goes around and holds it so you can lower the tire, raise it up and lower it out so you can change your tire. It has warning, nope, Wilson logo there, Wilson logo there, and it's got some warnings and instructions here. Rivet detail looks really nice. All the molding looks really nice. The sides, they are plastic, guys. We're used to getting all metal trailers, but these sides are plastic. So I'm not sure how well you're gonna like that, but they are plastic. The gate inside is plastic as well, but we would have expected that just like the other one being all plastic does make this trailer a little cheaper than the others even though this truck comes out at a much more expensive price and the first two releases are quite a bit more expensive they have pushed well over the hundred dollar mark but they did keep the screw down landing gear here so that we can have it the kingpin is far enough forward so that it doesn't cause a problem with turning this trailer when it's hooked to a tractor which is a good thing as you can see, plenty of clearance for the mud flaps, which is a really important thing because the other trailer did not have good clearance for the mud flaps. Now, this trailer does ride on plastic wheels. Of course, all of the DCP trucks have been plastic. Plastic wheels is just kind of the standard. They've always been that way so that uh, they're easy to chrome plate. But look at this. There's supposed to be a five spoke Dayton wheel look at they didn't get the wheels very well defined here the pattern is a little bit closed up here and big gap closed weird gaps not really sure where they got this mold it's not a really good mold for the wheel it's different hasn't been done before but it is not i mean they're just not very well defined Looks like these wheels should have gotten some more attention in the uh, process while they were going through the molding. I mean, look, close, close, not even close. So I'm, I don't know. I think they did had a miss on those wheels. Now, let's compare this one to the top shelf trailer that came out many years ago. Guess what, guys? Very similar. Plastic sides. It has a metal top, a metal front, a metal bottom, but the sides are plastic. The definition is actually probably, let's think, both had screw down landing gear. This top shelf does have screw down landing gear, so we'll screw it down. But there was a problem with his kingpin placement with this when they came out with this trailer because the kingpin actually is a little too far back and the landing gear will catch the mud flaps on most trucks when you try to turn it. There were a few trucks that it would actually hitch up with, but most of the DCP toolings, it would snag the landing gear, would snag the mud flaps of the trailer. That's never good. His feet, if you'll notice, this has the standard DCP square feet. And this one has more of a rectangular pad. His was a little bit bigger, so probably a little bit more stable. And I'll show you with this truck how the landing gear is. You see, I'm hooked to the kingpin and the mud flap. See it? The, the, the mud flap right here is actually rubbing on the landing gear because it's too far back. So that is a big problem with this trailer. Kingpin was too far forward, it actually had to be moved back just a little bit, or the fifth wheel moved back. It needed to be moved back oh to about here. That's where it should be. Or this landing gear should have been a little further back. I think the landing gear actually should have been a little further back, but that's all right. So you got to be careful with what tra tractor you hitch this trailer to. Now he did five spoke Dayton's, very well defined. And I chose this one because it had the white wheels just like the other one. And of course, if you'll notice, white is very hard to match, believe it or not. White is actually one of the harder colors to match out there. 
They're both a slightly different shade of white. His trailer, the top shelf trailer, has the air tank right here, whereas this one does not have an air tank. The first gear one does not have an air tank. The slats, well defined. You can see it is shorter right there. You can see there is a length difference because this is a 40 and that's a 45. So they should be different lengths. This one has marker lights tampo there, down here, and back here. It doesn't have an upper one there. It has front corner ones, bringing them around. They both have a spare tire on the carrier. This one has the same similar stringing to hold it so you can lift the tire up. However, if you'll notice the bar, they put this tire on the opposite of this one. This is probably correct. I think this is actually wrong because this was probably what is screwed to the wall so you could hold the tire in place. There is no porch light. There's not even room for it because of this bracket. It should have been a little further down so you could have a porch light there, the banner. But maybe not all of them had it, so he molded after one that doesn't. But Wilson logos there, whereas theirs are more on the corner, the decals, and then he has got the... Uh, instructions and warnings all little decals there looks really nice marker lights are there and there and they should have probably been a little further around on the corner that's all right sides are again plastic you can see both have them plastic this one has more of a closed up much more closed pattern a little thinner there and there and definitely more closed up in the front than this one does but overall, both have very well-defined rivet detail and on each side and then the strakes and everything else. Both run on soft rubber tires, but if you'll notice, this is more of a trailer tread pattern, whereas that is more of a drive tread pattern. So, yeah, they should have changed that a little bit. Now to the back. No Wilson logo. One little marker light. They're both center loads. You'll notice this opening is a little narrower than this one. Not a lot, but a little bit narrower. In fact, I think, yeah, the trailer is actually also a little bit narrower. This one might be molded after an eight foot six wide, and this one was probably molded after an eight foot wide. That wouldn't be much of a difference in 64th, but it just a little bit. Both have the Wilson trailer mud flaps, and they're both solid. Uh, ABS plastic brake lights are tampoed and then it has the same little standard now if you'll notice this deck is higher than this deck so a little higher climb to get up into the trailer for the cows off the ramp but you know trailers have different heights of decks it has a diamond tread inside but note no gates at all. There's also no deck in there either. So that's just kind of useless. There is a little gate there on the ramp down. This one does not have the ramp down into the floor. This one does. So overall, Top Shelf made a really nice trailer. And First Gear made another nice trailer. Now which one do you think is better? I think Top Shelf missed the mark simply on their landing gear and first gear did not make that mistake landing gear should have just been basically the width of the landing gear further back or his kingpin should have been just a hair further forward but i think it should have been the landing gear back so that made this trailer very hard to hitch a tractor to but this one here on the other hand was hitched to any dcp they they did that good which trailer do you like better the top shelf 40 foot or the Wilson 45 foot that came out from first gear. Just let me know. I'd like to know it down in the comments. Tell me your thoughts on these two trailers because they are made by different manufacturers. They're different links, but they're modeling basically the same era trailers. 70s, 80s, when things changed and the punch side started taking over the 53s and the big 48s started coming in in the after these so let me know your thoughts on them i'd really like to know it 
and that is the top shelf replicas 40 foot and the DCP 45 foot Wilson vintage livestock trailers. The DCP came with this nice looking copper colored, they call it brown, but I think it looks copper colored, Kenworth K100. And it looks really good hooked up to it. The top shelf replicas trailer didn't actually come with a tractor. And there we go. There are the trailers hooked together. The first gear, DCP by first gear, 45 foot Wilson vintage trailer over here came with this beautiful Kenworth K100 cab over. The top shelf replicas trailer, their 40 foot vintage Wilson trailer, it didn't come with a tractor. However, because he had made these international 4300s, yes, this is a top shelf replicas tooling. He had made these back right after his trailer came out and he was having trouble selling the trailers he actually started packaging some of the trailers with one of the tractors and sold them as a set so that is a true top shelf replicas setup rig i'll do a video on this 4300 international at some point so make sure to like subscribe and ring the bell for all the notifications and please go on drop your comments and share this video with your friends I know this one's a little bit different than what I normally do because normally I like to do the histories, but this is just compare the two trailers. What do you think? I'll be back with another video soon.